major companies reporting this week, but a special sector I'm going to be watching is the agriculture stocks. Now, a bunch of them are reporting earnings this week, so I thought we'd take a deeper dive into what's happening with the earnings outlook for these companies, what their earnings track records are like, because nobody's been paying them much attention for the last couple of years, with the exception of maybe the equipment side of things on agriculture. But we seem to be entering into a new super cycle for the agriculture sector, according to the analysts, uh, industry watchers, basically everybody. So what kind of stocks are out there and where could you be looking? I brought five earnings charts so we could take a look. So the first stock out the gate is the Andersons. And as you can see down here, they put together two big beats here in a row. Uh, but there's this section in the middle where there's no arrows, and that's because the Andersons is the smallest of the stocks I'm going to talk about today. They only have a market cap of about $900 million. So they're a small cap company based in Ohio, and so they're not as widely followed by the analysts. So that's why you see that like mysterious you know, missing section. But maybe some more are going to start tuning in as things turn around here again in the agriculture industry. So the Andersons is known for doing the fertilizer side that's in the nutrition area. They also do grain storage and they have a rail component. So they're pretty diverse, which is why a lot of people um, you know, might want to get into this one in particular. Now, shares are up 29 percent in the last year. But as you can see, they're nowhere near their former highs when the fertilizer side was doing much better. So still a lot of upside, PE of about 20, and they pay a dividend. This is definitely one if you're looking for the small cap area, you should keep an eye on. Then we're going to switch over to much bigger company, Nutrien. They're in Canada, and they are agribusiness is what I would describe them in. They're known mainly for their fertilizers, of which they're one of the big fertilizer companies out there, which is like phosphates, potash, some nitrogen. I think Nutrien is in a little bit of that. But their key area is um, also on just doing the business side, which is uh, retail and seeds and things like that. So Nutrien is kind of the more bigger, complete package it uses the agribusiness side to sustain itself when the fertilizer side isn't as strong. But now we're starting to enter into, again, the super cycle. So both components could be doing well here. As you can see, these shares are trying to get back to the five-year high here with a pretty serious rally up 33%. Um, over the last year, they put together as well two beats in a row as things are starting to turn around. They also pay one of the higher dividends in the industry, yielding just over 3% right here. So if you're interested in the dividend, this is one to keep in mind. Then we're going to switch over to Mosaic, also on the fertilizer, also with two beats in a row. They are up 48% in the last year, and they're big in the phosphates and the potash, or potash, however you're pronouncing it. Um, I've heard it both ways. And they're turning around 19 times, but again, with any commodity where they're entering into the up cycle, the earnings and all of that is going to kind of lag. So they're going to have a higher P.E. ratio than they will at the peak of the cycle. So not too concerned about the P.E. They do pay a dividend, but it's just a small dividend for right now. That may change, though, as uh, you know, market conditions get stronger here on the fertilizer side. Then we're going to switch over to another fertilizer, CF Industries, ticker CF. They're based in Illinois, and one year these shares are only up 12.7%. They also have that big miss last quarter after two big beats in a row, so a little bit different than some of the others that have just started to put together their string of beats. They had that miss, but nobody cared as those shares were off to the races even after that big miss. Um, they're the largest maker of ammonia, and they're also big on the nitrogen side, but also have some phosphates. So keep all that in mind. I believe they're still paying their dividend here, um, almost 3% yield, but a little bit under what Nutrien is paying. So a lot of these companies have been paying a decent dividend the last couple of years to keep you investors around. 
while you're waiting for the cycle to break out. Well, we're now getting it, so we'll see what happens going forward here, but um, these shares at 25 times, as I said, the PEs are gonna be higher, but this is definitely one to keep on your list. Then we're gonna wrap it up with the equipment side and deer. And as you can see, not much needs to be said here. They're putting together this nice five beats in a row here, two huge beats in the last couple of quarters as commodity prices for corn and wheat and soybeans have risen. The farmers have more money. It's been a couple of years, which is why those shares went nowhere for several years because nobody was really upgrading their equipment. Well, there's new technology, the equipment only lasts so long, and now the farmers have money. So now we're starting to see uh, big order flows coming in and the shares are at five year highs. They are up 50% in the last year. Deer does pay a dividend, it's yielding only 1% here. This one is a PE of about 24. And the PEs on the equipment makers a little bit different because they're not completely uh, based on the commodity like the fertilizers are. So it's a little pricey here for me, but uh, the outlook looks good on the equipment side as again, we are entering into the super cycle. So this run may not be over yet, but we'll see what happens this earnings quarter. So as you can see, the agriculture sector is really looking interesting here, and there are these different ways to play it. There's more stocks than just these five, but this week will give us a clearer eye onto what's happening here in 2021. And oh, by the way, the uh, weather conditions are still good for the farmers here entering into the spring, spring planting season here in North America. So that's another positive that should be happening for all of these companies actually here in 2021. So you want to be sure to subscribe to get all of our earnings all-star videos because you don't know what areas I might be covering and what stocks might appear that you weren't even paying any attention to. So be sure to get all of our videos by subscribing to zax.com slash YouTube to get our YouTube channel. But otherwise, I'm going to keep bringing you more earnings videos as the earnings season continues to roll on. We have a couple more weeks still to go. So be sure to subscribe and I'll see you again next time with some more earnings charts.